Hello, hello everybody. I'm Steve Reinhars, your CEO and CTO and founder of Artificial Intelligence Technology Solutions, trading on the OTC markets as the ticker AITX. Hopefully we're your favorite. And I want to share with you so much on these weekly meetings, you know, like I just, I share, I share some company status, I share a little personal journey, share some futurism. I mean, that's what these weekly videos are about. So let's lead off with me sharing about the last 14 months and sharing with you from a guy who thrives on intensity with my own work efforts and inspiring a team to gather around me to do the same. These last 14 months have been the most intense of my career. And I really think it's maxed out in terms of uh, how much work one person can do. And that says a lot because getting to this point was very, very, very hard. Very hard. Otherwise, so many other people would be doing it. And we went through intense periods of existential crisis. And I'm not saying that there's not potential for that in the future. There sure is. But the last 14 months have been intense because I've had tools to create products. We've had teams, we've had critical mass, we've had growing sales, we've had all of these good things that have in turn empowered me to build and create more. And to be sitting in front of the camera today to share with you, at this moment, we have revealed the vast bulk of AITX's product line. It's a big, big, big deal. Yes, a couple other software innovations are coming for sure. Yes, there's one more hardware product that is kind of at the bottom of the list. We might bring the market, we might not. It depends on a few different things. Yes, there's still some of that early R&D stuff happening. Very little. Really what we're doing is we're making what we have better. And that includes what we released this last week. Very specifically, we started out by sharing, hey, we have built a vest for Hero. And we are going to do a little bit of work on humanoids, and we're gonna see where that goes, okay? I think that at least for the next year or so, we're probably looking at humanoid guards as a bit of novelty, a bit of uh, real work, but also a little bit of novelty. I think that there's public acceptance challenges that need to be overcome. That'll take some time. I think there's some technical issues that need to happen in terms of battery length and some functionality. Uh, so it's, it's a work in progress. We've got our big toe in it. We're in there. We're going to sell a few, hopefully by the end of this calendar year. We'll see. But I have low expectations. I want to set low expectations for you for Hero to start with. In contrast to that, I want to set great expectations for both Romeo and Rad Dog, both of which we showed some incredible real-life mobility functions happening this past week. Let's start by talking a little bit about Romeo. Now, Romeo started years ago. The idea of Romeo is what started Rad in general. So to have Romeo version four, to know how good the autonomy is, how good the reliability is, how good the functionality is, to be able to bring in Sarah and some other surprises that are coming, I am just thrilled. I know this year we will move a bunch. I don't exactly know how much. It takes a little bit of time and money to spool up production, to find the right customers, and just to hammer out some of the early implementation challenges that every product has. So I want to be very cautious on that. I do expect that it will make a significant impact on next year's, which starts on Monday, next year's fiscal results. Huge. That impact could be parabolic to our financials. But needless to say, the concept of Romeo, the concept of a roaming wheeled security guard type robot has been in market for many years, hasn't been executed ever as well as Romeo is going to execute it now. So super excited about that. I see a great market. I see a smart ramp up in 2025 and I hopefully see fantastic production deployments and revenues in 2026. So that's Romeo, very excited about it, very confident about it, excited about the publicity and the press and the functionality, and that's a great thing, a great, great, great thing. Okay, so that's Romeo. Let's talk about Rad Dog LE2. Now, I think I'm, I'm wearing a, some old merch. 
from when we first started talking about Rad Dog a few years ago, just to show you how long things can take. And what happened was, was we did our first Rad Dog deployment with the city of Taylor, with Taylor Police Department, and they still have it, they use it, it's all good. But we learned some very important functionality limitations through that deployment. And because of that, and because we're a small company and nimble and flexible, when I started seeing that data and hearing those comments, I immediately stopped development on Rad Dog LE1 in favor of shifting our development into Rad Dog LE2. Different body, of course it's wheeled, different backpack, because I didn't want to continue down a track of development that I didn't believe in, that I didn't feel was great. Contrast to stopping that development and moving those resources over and bringing Rad Dog LE2 to market, I now have supreme confidence and excitement on what Rad Dog LE2 is going to do for law enforcement and for Rad. Now, just to share a little bit, you know, I've been in security since I was 23 on the commercial side, and I've got to have some incredible career moments, mostly with Los Angeles Police Department uh, over the years doing some, some cool stuff. You know, I have a tremendous respect for, for law enforcement, and I hope everybody does as well. And of course, we have uh, one of our supreme heroes uh, on our team being Troy McKenna. And Troy has done everything across his 23 years of FBI experience, plus his six years of being a Cleveland uh, Police Department officer as well. So having his input and his guidance and what he shares in terms of confidence has just helped us create a product that I know should be in every police department's bag of tricks because I know that it diffuses situations, that it contributes to officer safety and thereby citizen safety as well. So I super believe in it. I really hope over the next few years we can cultivate multiple large police departments to take multiple Rad Dog LE2s. You all know that I have a dream that police officers one day have a canine partner, a robotic canine partner, to do a lot of dangerous, difficult work for them. Okay, so that's Rad Dog LE2. So cool. Hero, Romeo V4, Rad Dog LE2, our mobile line is announced and shown with tangible actions. So nobody can say that this is vaporware. Nobody can say this is just a sketch on a chalkboard. This is real. We're bringing it to market. And the schedule is as follows. The production transition work for Romeo is happening right now. It's a large project. We should start bringing out Romeos into production in small quantities starting in the summer. That I listed in the press release. That might be news to you if you didn't read the press release. Rad Dog LE2, we look to make our first deployment in the next month or so. Uh, give or take, a few technical issues to finish, and we are already starting early, early, early production transition work. Rad Dog LE2 will be built at our awesome factory, The Rex, in Detroit. It should make it an American product, which is great for all of us. Romeo as well, made in Detroit, as we always intended, made in the USA. Awesome. Along those lines, though, uh, the tariff situation has given us opportunity, and we're going to seize that opportunity. I think we're going to be seeing lower Rio production costs. In fact, I'm quite sure we're going to be seeing lower Rio production costs towards the end of this year, which says something to our ability to procure and create logistics supply because, of course, all steel coming into the United States has a 25% surcharge tariff on top of it. So we're going to navigate around that and actually lower our costs from where our costs were even before the tariffs. We're going to bring them over. There'll be a temporary time where we've got to pay that extra 25%. We'll always have to pay the 25, but we're paying it on a high basis right now. We're going to pay it on a lower basis. The tariffs are what the tariffs are. I'm, you know, I'm not here to be political. It's I roll with the punches, whatever they may be. That's what we have to do. Um, but I'll share with you in some of these industries where we're looking to bring in tariffs to uh, either protect U.S. industries or um, create markets in, in the U.S. where we have typically offshored all that work, I'll just share with you that a 25% tariff uh, will not do it. American production costs on different products is still uh, a huge disparity between 
what you could do offshore versus onshore. And um, anyway, that's just the reality of it. We will roll with the punches. We're responsible to our investors and our clients to create profits and to bring properly priced products to market. And my job is to navigate those situations in order to deliver that. So that's where we're at on tariffs. I'm going to close up with maybe a joke. I don't know, maybe a funny, you guys tell me, but next week, or maybe when you're watching this right now, Rad Dog LE2 is going to be all over the Florida State Capitol. I think we might be walking the speaker down the aisle to open up legislature. I don't know, but there's a whole bunch of events that should get lots and lots of eyeballs and spur demand for Rad Dog LE2. But in any case, you know, we're talking about Florida, we're talking about Rad Dog, we're talking about this exposure that's coming and how it's gonna drive sales. And so I'm on the, uh, a particular call this morning and somebody on the call says, uh, yeah, so it looks like Rad Dog LE2 is gonna be running the state of Florida for this legislative session. And I said, no, I said, no, 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 no. I said, I said we've got Radigator in early development. Okay, I don't know. Didn't sound that funny, but hopefully you got a chuckle or a smile of it. Rad a gator. We are not build. Let me clarify. We are not building a robotic alligator. But if we did, I know we'd be able to sell them in Florida. Everybody, I hope you're having a great time. Have a great weekend. Make it a great day. We'll see you next time.